so we don't know a whole lot for sure about the Glanton gang, but what we do know is more than enough. Some of you may know the Glanton Gang from their appearance in Blood Meridian, and that book is more or less based on another book, My Confession by Samuel Chamberlain, which is where we get pretty much everything we know about the gang and everything I'm about to tell you. So first things first here, John Joel Glanton was born in Edgefield County, South Carolina in 1819. He may have been an outlaw in Tennessee while still a kid, took part in the Texas Revolution at 16 years old, might have had a fiance killed by life and ended up fighting in the Mexican-American War where he might have murdered a Mexican civilian. Anywho, in 1849, he and a group of, and I quote, Sonorans, Cherokee and Delaware Indians, French Canadians, Texans, Irishmen, a Negro, and a full-blooded Comanche were hired by the Mexican state of Chihuahua to hunt down and eliminate as many Apache as possible. See, the northern states of Mexico had been having issues with the Apache who weren't big fans of anyone other than and the Apache being on Apache land. Yeah, kind of makes sense. So the powers that be offered up a bounty of 100 pesos for every scalp that was collected in order to deal with those pesky Apache. And so the Glanton gang made themselves a fortune. The problem other than, you know, hunting down and scalping people. Oh, and they also would kidnap native women, have their ways with them, kill and scalp them, but not always in that order, was that after long enough, the Apache became rather good at hit and run attacks and so it became more difficult to collect their bounty. However, a solution to this was to simply attack peaceful natives. Because, you know, you can't really tell the difference between a peaceful and aggressive scalp. And when they started having a difficult time finding peaceful natives to attack and scalp, well, you know, you can't really tell the difference between a native and a Mexican scalp. So they started just killing and scalping anyone whose scalp would pass as Apache. And yes, this included children. Once the Chihuahua and government yeah, I know that sounds weird. Figured this out, they put a bounty out on Glanton and his men, so they moseyed on next door to Sonora and started the whole thing all over again. And of course, it ended up with the same result, and so they ended up heading north to Arizona, where they just happened to stumble upon the Yuma crossing of the Colorado River, run by a man named Lincoln, where they either forced him to become partners or just killed him, one of the two. Either way, they took over the ferry and they supposedly would rob the people that used the ferry, sometimes killing them, sometimes ferrying them across. And at some point, they came into conflict with the local Quachon people. It's believed that the Quachons ran a rival ferry and that Glanton's men had attacked them to take out their competition. Whether that's true or not, in April 1850, they attacked the Yuma Crossing and killed almost everyone there, including Glanton. Daniel Chamberlain got away, hence why he was able to write about his experiences and another of the survivors was Clanton's second in command, a man from Texas referred to as Judge Holden. Yeah, for fans of Blood Meridian, Judge Holden was a real person, supposedly. Described as being six foot six in his moccasins, had a large fleshy frame, a dull tallow colored face, destitute of hair and all expression, his desires was blood and women, and a cooler blooded villain never went unhung. Now, there's no other known evidence of Holden existing, which which isn't all that uncommon at the time and place, but supposedly everywhere he went, children either went missing or turned up dead. This included a 10-year-old Mexican girl found ravaged and murdered with a handprint around her neck that only Holden's hand was big enough to make. So yeah, in short, the Glanton gang were a bunch of murderous, rape-hungry scalp hunters that killed countless people. 